Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood. Thanks for joining me for another Tip Tuesday. It's been a few weeks since our Lightroom speed retouching video, and today I'm going to show you part one of how I corrected that photograph. Let's pull in the image, and you can see I'm using the same photo of Mr. John Hayes. And the overall photo I like, but it's just a little flat for my taste. So, one of the first changes that we're going to look at today is just going to add just a little bit of pop to the overall image. I'm going to focus on the basics panel. So I'm going to make some changes here to the basics panel and one of the initial questions I always get about the basics panel is, hey, I noticed that the exposure fader and the brightness fader, when I slide those, they seemingly do the same thing. And I want you to understand that when you're adjusting the exposure fader, you're targeting the highlight areas first when you're doing brightness. When you use the brightness fader, you're going to target the mid-tone range. So let's go ahead and take a look in the image. And I want you to see here, uh, if I do take the exposure, and I'm going to bump that and crank that way up, see how it blows out the image, but look at the effect that it's having. I'll go ahead and reset that, <clears throat> and now I'll adjust the brightness. Okay, and it does brighten the image, but look at the difference, right? So brightness, again, targets the mid-tone range. Exposure is going to target the highlight areas. So I'll make some changes here to the image. I'm going to add just a little bit of exposure. Okay, I'm going to use my recovery to pull back some highlights. I don't need a fill light in this image. I am going to do add a little bit of shadow clipping <coughs> to darken it up. And then I am going to kind of bring the brightness down want to increase the overall contrast and I'm going to jump over presence for just a second and go right to the tone curve and I've got kind of a flat tone here a tone curve going so I'm just going to add some medium contrast now I want to point out that here in the tone curve you'll notice a slight shallow S shape so what you want to understand is when you're looking at that tone curve the steeper the S curve the stronger the contrast. So notice, if you look really close at the tone curve, even just a shallow S will give you a bit of contrast. Let me collapse the tone curve and jump back to the basics panel, and let me take a look at the presence section. Now you can see here there's clarity. I get asked about clarity quite a bit. Clarity uh, gives the appearance of sharpening, but what you're doing here is changing mid-tone contrast, right? So it gives you the appearance of making things sharper and it really works well for uh, chrome, metallic, for structures, um, for inanimate objects, it works really well. You wanna be careful when you're using clarity on people. So I'm gonna go ahead and just crank the clarity up and look at the effect that it has on the image when I just crank it up to 100, right? So this is the image before, this is the image after, right? So it definitely has a very distinctive look. I might even say that if you're familiar with Dave Hill, right, that's one of the settings that's flying around the internet that is part, supposedly, of his recipe. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to make that the focus of today's lesson, um, but certainly you can play around with that and you can see how some people are trying to achieve that look. In this photograph, I don't want that appearance, so I'm going to set the clarity to zero. Right? Generally for portraiture, I might use negative clarity. Let me show you that. Negative 100 makes everything go soft. <clears throat> so if you wanted to do skin softening, hey, that's a tip. You could use negative clarity for that. But I'm just going to leave clarity at zero. What I want to do is increase the uh, color. So saturation would be way too much. You can see uh, John's skin goes orange. So instead, I'm going to use vibrance, right? So the key difference between vibrance and saturation is vibrance targets the muted colors first. So I'm looking to make the colors pop, hey, not the colors that are already saturated, that are already really bright, the colors that are muted. So uh, vibrance targets the muted colors first. So here, if I make uh, vibrance too much, you can see again, it's too much in the scene, but it did really get the sky and it grabbed his eyes, hey, um, and it did actually grab uh, his lips. So I'm just gonna pull this back. I don't want quite that much Hey, just a little bit of vibrance. So here is our before image. Notice it didn't really look flat until I made those tonal changes and gave it some punch. And this is the image after. 
Okay, so not a lot of changes. Hey, just a little bit, but again, this is before and this is after. Have one last tip to show you here for today, and that's over here on the left side panel where I have my snapshots. The keyboard shortcut I'm using for before and after is simply the backslash key. So I'm using the backslash key to do before and after. But I want you to see that if I right click on either a snapshot or a history step, there in the menu it says copy snapshot settings to before. So you can choose what you want the before image to be. So in this case, I started off with a healed version of the image, right? and I used that as my before and after to show you how I did the tunnel changes. That's part one of this retouching series, all inside of Lightroom. Join me next week where I'll show you how I made changes to the eyes and specifically to the nose and to the face using the spot healing brush and the overall adjustment brush. So I'm AJ Wood. Thanks for joining me this week. Appreciate you being here as always. Please subscribe to this channel and you can also join me on Facebook. So I'll see you next week. Thanks.